So KNF Concept was more than gracious to send me one of the latest filters, the one to five stop ND filter plus circular polarizer in one filter. It's this thing right here. And today's episode of this POV landscape photography shoot, we're gonna be testing this bad boy out because I have a few reservations about it, but I don't wanna make any concrete conclusions until I actually test it out. So that's what we're gonna do today, test out this filter on a landscape shoot. What's up guys, it's a Project Photography back with another video. And today, people, today, we're gonna be shooting some landscape photography, POV. Y'all are gonna be on the hot shoot, watching me shoot some landscape photography, first person point of view, all the fun stuff. And as I said earlier, KNF Concept sent me this ND filter. It's a one to five stop circular polarizer. It's pretty decent from what I've seen so far. I wanna be as fair to it as possible when making a review about it. It's not a review by any means, but I really wanna use this time to test out the actual filter and see if it's any good or not. So the rest of the photos that you're gonna be seeing from today, also the rest of the video you're gonna be seeing is using this one to five stop filter. I'm pretty excited to use it and I hope everything goes well. And yeah, let's just get a move on machine landscape photography. I'm here at Abalone Cove in California. Uh, we're just gonna be looking around, seeing what's up. You know, it's three o'clock right now. So we have about two hours to just walk around and see, you know, what can we shoot? All that good stuff. Pretty interesting weather, it's kind of cloudy on that side especially. So we're just gonna work with it, see what's up. And yeah, let's go shoot some last year photography. So if y'all don't follow my channel, I do this thing where I put you guys on my camera, get a first person point of view for when I'm shooting landscape photography. And that's what exactly we're gonna do. Let's do this thing. What's up y'all, we're now behind the scenes, behind the camera. And today we're gonna be shooting some more amazing landscape photography. So this is Abalone Cove and this is in the Palos Verde area. I'm testing out this filter because, you know, I wanna make sure I give it a fair shot. So I did not see anything over there. I just felt like there's no sort of composition I could work with. You know, I just didn't like how it looked. So what I'm gonna doing instead is walking over this direction and I'm seeing this kind of rock structure, that sort of larger one. I think I can make a composition work out of that. I'm trying to get like the uh, waves moving, get the water moving and you know, make that kind of like a focal point and then try to see, you know, what I can work with. So right now I'm showing you guys how the actual polarizer filter works. So that bigger ring is the polarizer, you turn that, get the polarizing effect. And those little dots on the actual filter is where the um, the ND comes in. You turn that lever and that's where how the ND filter aspect works. So now we are on a photo. And this is what I was trying to go for. I was trying to make sure that I get the actual rock as a centerpiece of the photo and then get the water moving and kind of make it look sort of mystic. The problem with this one, the reason why I don't like this composition specifically is because I feel like, you know, it doesn't really capture, it's not too, it's not wide enough. And when I say wide enough, I feel like it doesn't capture a whole lot. I feel like it's too compressed, which I don't really like. Keep on moving on here and I changed locations a bit. I wanna to try to get a little bit of a wider shot, not as compressed. So I think this definitely encapsulates that a bit better. And the thing about this one is that I feel like you know there's no water in it, so I need to make sure I get some water in it. The problem was the water and the waves did not really come up that far back. So I felt like it was harder to capture exactly what I wanted in the horizontal orientation. Move on to the next frame here. And this one has a bit more water which is great, but again, I feel like it doesn't, it's not capturing exactly what I want. I'm gonna go ahead and move in the whole or vertical orientation right here because the reason why I'm doing this is because I feel like I can get a little bit of a wider point of view when it comes to the vertical orientation because I'm able to get a little bit more in the foreground, a little bit more in the sky. And that's kind of what I'm going for right here. Um, this is kind of like the photo I'm thinking of, but I want to get more waves moving and obviously that the centerpiece or the, my main subject is not centered. So I go ahead and move my stuff and move my uh, equipment and we're going to take another photo right here. And this is a photo that I actually decide to edit. 
And I really like this photo a lot. I mean, it captures exactly what it felt like on this day. It's a little bit moody and I'm capturing a lot of the texture in the water as well as the sky. I really like this photo. I think this is probably my favorite photo of the day. So we're gonna go ahead and keep on moving on here. I'm gonna pick up and move to the other side or whatever aspect or side of the beach there is. Um, as you can see you guys, the the weather itself, the light is very watered down, is very dim. There's not a lot of uh, like harsh light going on. This was at like four or so. The sun was not down all the way. Sunsets are very early now, which is kind of cool, but also it's like, you know, I wanna be able to stay out for longer, but it's all good. So this photo right here, this is what I'm kind of capturing. I want to capture the kind of curvature of the actual uh, beach itself. I also want to capture kind of the rocks as a main, another main subject and the water moving. Um, those three elements, I think, create a nice sense of balance. And I don't know, they're just very interesting subjects. Like all three of them are interesting in their own way. So that's exactly what I'm trying to capture here. I, I'm just trying different out compositions, seeing, you know, what can I get to work? What do I feel like is going to be the best composition? Just working with the different sort of um, angles and viewing points. So we we'll take another composition right here, another frame. And right here, I want to point a few things out. Um, you can see kind of how the vignetting itself is. If you look on this right side here, there's kind of that bluish tint. And also you can see like the shade. But if you notice on the adjacent side of the frame, it, there's also the same problem. So that's the thing about this filter, especially at the wide angle, is that you get this effect of kind of that vignetting and that weird color shift, which is kind of odd. But I mean, I'm at my 14 millimeter range. When I'm at like 24 or 20 millimeters, that's not a problem. And also shooting at five stops. So, you know, when I'm using it at my extremes is where you kind of see those problems come in. So I'm just gonna get up and move and see, you know, what other um, types of frames I can get, you know, work with the composition, you know, just making sure I capture all aspects that I want, get the exact photo that I want. So right here, um, you can see again on the right hand side and the left hand side, there's a lot of that color shift as well as that vignetting. But on the edited version, you can see that it cleans up pretty nicely. And that's the thing is that this filter does have its flaws in that sense, but you can clean it up for sure. Like if you were to just look at this photo itself, the edited version, I mean, you can't tell that there's any sort of that harsh vignetting or color shift in any of that. But like the color cast in this lens is actually pretty good. Like you can't there's, there's essentially negligent which is pretty cool but yeah i mean it, and when i edit it it looks good and that's really what matters so let's keep moving on so we're gonna go ahead and pick up and after this we're gonna go ahead and move to the other side of the actual um cove there's another cove on the other side so that's where we're gonna move to so let's get back to the video so now we are on the other side of the beach that we just at like the beach that we were at before was over that cliff area. Now we're on the other side, just seeing what we can go ahead and shoot. So I've been using this uh, filter for a bit now. It's actually pretty decent. Um, I'll make a full review on that later, but um, the lighting right now is kind of weird. It's all just kind of like um, a lot of clouds and all that. So sunset doesn't really matter at this point because it's so cloudy to the point where you can't even see the sky anymore. So. Now it's just all about light, make sure, making sure we find good light. And that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just be shooting. And yeah, I just wanna cut in there, let you guys know that we're on the other side and sun, you know, sunset doesn't really matter. So let's see right back to shooting. All right, we are now on the other side of the cove, as I said before, this is the other side. And the thing is with this actual photo that I'm trying to get, you know, I feel like there's not that many compositions that I can really work with that are unique and different. And also there's not a lot of elements in the frame. There's only really that like cliff edge and the sky and the water and that's it. I mean, there's nothing really to work with. So, and plus I don't want to keep uh, creating the same images. I just feel like that's kind of repetitive. And here you can see the vignetting is actually pretty harsh. Like there's a lot on the top and a lot on the bottom, but I mean, that's just how this filter operates. You know, it's, it's all right. I mean, you can work around it, but in extreme scenarios is where it kind of affects it heavily. So on the other side, I actually see this sort of like ledge area. It pretty much like extends out to the ocean. I don't know if you guys can really see that, but there's like this ledge area that I head out to that pretty much, yeah, it goes out to the ocean. And I feel like I want to try and get something with the rocks and with the water and see, you know, what can I work with when it comes to that composition? So you see this ledge area trying to work with this see you know what are the different options that i have and it's pretty nice of an area it's just it's hard because of the wide angle lens makes that cliff in the back looks really small 
And that's this kind of focal point that I want in the image. As you can see right here is where I have the foreground element of that kind of ledge. And I mean, it does work nicely. It just feel like it's a bit crowded. I want to have a little bit less elements and I also want to incorporate more of the sky. So this is kind of where I go ahead and change compositions right here. I'm going to go ahead and pick up and move. I want to get more of the rocks at the bottom. But the problem is this water area was really, really sketchy. Like the waves are pretty rough at a certain point. I'm just trying not to die. So yeah, that's kind of the idea I was looking for right there. I mean, I like it. And it, I think it can work, especially for this. So I switched into the horizontal orientation just to see, you know, what are my different options? What can I get? And here's the thing. I think it works out pretty nicely. I think the images I get are pretty good. But I, I mean, I want a little more variety. And you're going to see right now the photo that I take. And this is the photo. It's a good photo. Don't get me wrong. It's just, I feel like I want to be able to have a little bit more of the sky which is why I'm more leaning towards a vertical orientation. But overall, I actually do like this photo. So um, the thing with like water, I like to capture a lot of moving water, especially in oceans, because I feel like that's really what captures um, oceans as a whole. And here's another photo of that kind of same concept. I actually really like this photo. I might go back and edit it. This, the thing is, is that there's kind of like that like seaweed on that rock, which kind of bugs me a bit. And it's not really the most natural thing, but I mean, it's a good photo. It's just, you know, I kind of like, I prefer the vertical orientation a little bit more, which is why I go ahead and put the camera in the vertical orientation. And that lovely L bracket is putting in a lot of work, which is awesome. I love that thing. So this is the image that I come out with. The only problem is, you know, there's that like kind of rock on the bottom, which kind of bugs me a bit. So what I go ahead and do is, you know, try to change it up a bit, make sure I don't get that bottom part of the rock. This is the image that I get out of it. And this is also the image that I go ahead and edit. I really like this image a lot. I mean, I actually was very minimal when it came to editing. I didn't want to like overdo it or underdo it. I mean, I did as little as possible and I want to make sure the main thing I was bringing out was a texture, very monochromatic uh, water as well as a sky. But I want to make sure to bring out a lot of that texture because I felt like, you know, that's really what made this photo very interesting. I wish there was a little bit more of um, some, some of the, uh, elements of the bottom of the frame just a little bit more but i mean honestly i like this image uh, let me know what you guys think about this one i really like this one a lot so i just pick them and leave because at this point you know the water is insane and i'm not trying to die at all i'm not trying to get my clothes wet or any of that so i just pick them and leave because i'm satisfied with that image so it's all good and these are the images that i get let me know what you guys think is your favorite one i really like these images actually especially that first one it's a pretty good set of images for today it's pretty unusual to get three good images these are a bit hard to edit actually i felt like i was really going between what mood i want to portray as well as just trying to be as minimal as possible also these were all taken with a filter and they all the final product is pretty good i'm actually pretty surprised and you know what it, this filter is definitely workable if you really want to use this for landscape photography you definitely can for variable nds most photographers don't use variable nds especially for uh, landscape photography but i mean if you want to you definitely can so let me know what you guys let me know what your guys favorite photo was down in the comment section down below and let's get back to the video all right guys we are done for the day i'm done shooting how do you think the photos came out it was just dark it was it's very dark it's very, just dark it's very dark outside it's very it's, dark it's 5 30. it is it is 5 30 <laughs> and it is this dark so that is it for us today uh let me know what you guys think of the photos i just took i think they're pretty good i like them um especially the ones that i just pointed out to you guys in the voiceover so that's it for y'all thanks for watching this video like comment subscribe and i will catch you guys in the next one let's go get some food